Hey everybody, how you doing? It's lunchtime and you know what that means. It's another great episode of Lunchtime Talk with Steve. Today we have Rodney Hicks on here with us and um, he's an actor. You've seen him in so many different things and we're going to talk to him about um, actually one of the things I'm interested in finding out too is more of his um, his early start and um, you know on the stage you know and um, and a lot of you didn't know this. He was actually um, you know on Broadway um, stages and stuff like that so I mean I want to find out more about his early start on the stage um about the project that he just closed up which was mighty oak that great movie i um i watched it the other day and um we've had the cast on here and about some of the projects that he has coming up so stick around stay with us and we will have we'll be right back in a few minutes with rodney hicks all right give us just a few minutes people trying to secure your home or your business there's no other choice give them a call today for a free estimate would you like to be more tech savvy create your own compelling graphics sales pages and marketing tools would you like to effectively use social media to generate more leads if the answer is yes, register for one or all of the eight module digital marketing series. You will feel comfortable in a judge-free, nurturing environment as we get the work done. My name is Melissa Jane and I am your tech trainer. All right, there we go. Um, <laughs> caught myself off guard there for a second. All right, um, so guys, we are back and we are here today with Rodney Hicks. Hey, Rodney, how are you? I'm doing really well, Steve. Thank you for having me on your show. I appreciate you. Thank you very much for being on the show. You know, um, and I wanted to um, actually before we start, I just got a comment already that was up there. Hey, this is Kalila um, Camacho Ali. That's Muhammad Ali's ex-wife, as a matter of fact. Yeah, uh, <laughs> he's gonna be on the show next week. <laughs> oh, I love that! Oh, I love that! Yes, mm. um, great lady, great lady. I met her um, a few years back, and um, and you know, um, I invited her to be on the show, and she said yes. So we're gonna we're gonna have her on the show next week. We're gonna talk about so much, um, you Worse. know. So it's gonna be it's, it's gonna be a, a show you guys don't want to miss, you know. But um, but you know what? One of the things when I was reading about you um, that I didn't know is that you actually had your start on the stage. Oh, yes. But you were always, you know, um, movie, you know? <laughs> yeah, yeah. Um, I, I made my Broadway debut um, as part of the original cast of uh, the landmark musical Rent uh, mm -hmm. when I was 21 years old. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I had just turned 22 after we opened. <laughs> well, that was a great birthday gift. <laughs> yes, 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 indeed. Yes. 
and then I saw that you also um, were in um, in a play about um, the Scottsboro um, Boys, um, which is um, a story a lot of people don't know about. Um, uh, yes, mm -hmm. that was uh, that was in 2010. Uh, I think that was my fourth time on Broadway uh, with the Scottsboro Boys, and it also starred uh, Coleman Domingo, uh, Joshua Henry, uh, Forrest McClendon, like so many so many extraordinary talents uh, mm -hmm. in one show. And uh, I, I just, I learned so much in that show and I, I loved it because it was more than uh, doing a show. It was so much bigger than us. And that's the thing. A lot of people don't realize, you know, before we had, um, you know, the Central Park Five and the Gina Six, we had the Scott's Boys. Scott's Four Boys, yes. Yes. And, uh, and, yes. Um, that's and I got to, um, I, I portrayed Clarence Norris and that uh, who received a pardon uh, many, many years later. Uh, and I also have the wonderful opportunity to meet his daughter. Um, and so that and his grandson as well. So, um, you know, there were many memories from that time uh, of my life and that uh, show that I will always hold dear. See, I'm growing out my beard here too. I'm gonna, I'm gonna, <laughs> you know, that's the, gonna be the look, you know, the yes. boss. The, um, the beard and mustache. I'm gonna, I'm gonna be bringing the Rodney Hicks to Fort Lauderdale. <laughs> you know, I've always wanted to grow a beard, uh, and now that I can, it just feels so good. You know, <laughs> it really does. So, tell me about um the um about Mighty Oak. Um, how was it working on that set? And um and I mean, how? Well, first off, let's just do a little bit of comparison here. How is it different with um stage as opposed to um to movies? Because I mean, movie is like cut, cut, cut stage you just roll with it i mean so which one do you like better you know it, it is they're so different but yet uh engaging all the same uh we'll start with theater where uh theater that's all i had ever wanted to do uh mm -hmm. was be a theater artist uh for uh, as long as i can remember i'm one of those people who um that's all i ever wanted to do and the difference is that in theater you know, the audience, the live audience, there is a unique syncing up of uh, empathy and a unique syncing up of just a connecting of hearts. And so when you're doing a film, you really, in a sense, are you have to really engage that trust within, but more so you have to engage that trust with other artists as well. Um, you know, in theater, it's very much, you have your four weeks of rehearsal and then you run the show for however long you do the show. And you are of course reliant on every single person, but you're also reliant on the audience, you know, and their energy. And whereas in a film, um, why I love film as well and television is you do have cut and all of that, but you have to do your work so and in, in, like to the nth degree mm -hmm. so that therefore your goal is not to start the scene. Oh, I messed up. Can we cut? You know, that, that's not the goal. <laughs> the goal is to be there for every single person, no matter if it's on you, if the camera's on you or not. Because a lot of times, you know, uh, when you're doing film, you are doing a scene many, many, many times. And not just for you, you're doing for everyone else's coverage. So for me, when I do television and film, I love it because I, I get to uh, inhabit for everyone. You know, if if like the camp, if it's not my close up or whatever, if I'm not even on screen, I like to give 100% so that they therefore can get my actor energy and all of that. Uh, so it's not just, them acting to just someone, well, I'm just gonna wait my turn. And I say that because in our uh, making of The Mighty Oak, man, we had such a great time because the respect for every single person was palpable. The love for what we were doing and what we wanted to do was really profound. And we were just, we were hitting it every single day every person and that is the kind of art that i love to be around whether it's film television or theater
Now, one of the things too is uh, I always see these things, and when I talk to um to different um different actors, especially yes. they will say things like they try to make each other laugh when they're not um you know like when when you're off um off camera, mm-hmm. you try to make the person on camera laugh to mess up or whatever. Especially when they play practical jokes. Have you ever had anyone do that, or you've ever done that? No, and no. Um, <laughs> you know, I, I say that you know not to judge anyone because everyone has their own process. But yeah. for me, you know, there's a time and a place, and mm-hmm. you know, we had so much time to to laugh and enjoy. But for my personal work ethic, when that camera is saying "ready," we are ready. And we are here because time is money, money is time. And more importantly, it's about the integrity. It's Mm -hmm. about if you're, if we're making jokes and all of that while the camera is going, we are wasting someone's time. And the film and everything that um, that you take to run. Oh, 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 yes. I mean, granted, you know, if I, if we're running and, and I, I guess I'll put it on me, if I'm making mis- make a mistake, right? You know, mm-hmm. it's you you do stop, you do your pause, and sometimes if it's funny, it's funny, you know. But you have to bring yourself together and just soldier on. But um, that is one of the things I I love about film and TV and also theater, because in theater, we can make mistakes and, you know, you're holding in that laugh. (laughs) You're holding in that, oh man, I want to laugh so bad. But you know that there is an audience that paid really good money to see this live performance. And in film and TV, there is no audience. So Mm. the audience uh, are the film crew, the the, uh, grip, you know, the lighting grip, all of these people, who we wake up at four in the morning, three. So it is long, long days. So for me, it's an integrity thing. You know, um, I I love just, all right, let's do it. You know, (laughs) just showing up on set ready. And and that um that's that's the thing too because um like for example going to um going to the theater uh, tickets are expensive nowadays I mean how well nowadays you- there are no ticket prices <laughs> well, because of COVID but but yeah. before I mean Hamilton was running you like seven eight hundred dollars I'm like really and now you can see it on Disney Plus exactly <laughs> you know and then when you see it again when we come back there is mm-hmm. also uh, a deeper i believe appreciation a right. deeper uh, nuance than for people who follow in the footsteps of those of us who uh have been privileged and honored to originate these roles my last broadway show was a show that i hold really dear and close to my heart come from a way uh, that has become this international hit. And I've seen it now three times since I've been uh, departed the show. And, you know, there is nothing like the power of live theater, but there's also nothing like the power of the in- intimacy of a watching film or watching a television show and TV shows of binging a show, <laughs> you know. No, with Netflix, I mean, that's like the biggest thing, binging. Netflix, a pl- uh, uh, Amazon Amazon Prime, Apple, mm-hmm. Apple Plus, the, you know, the gamut. Yesterday I had Ben on the show. Um, I love know. Ben. <laughs> yeah, he's that's a good my buddy. Yeah. yeah. And um and he was um you know we were talking about um one of the shows he was on which was Bosch, and um and he said oh it's a um you know a great show and I didn't have um Amazon Prime so mm-hmm. then I'm like oh wait a second let me look up the trailer I went on um on YouTube and I looked up the trailer for it I signed up for Amazon Prime I'm binging it right now <laughs> and he's he's magnificent he is magnificent you know magnificent on it yes. Yeah, I haven't gotten to that part yet because he was in um, season five, I believe. But um, I'm in season one. I'm almost finished with season one, and I'm binging it as I'm doing my work. And um, it's so great because what happens too is it gives me so many different ideas on different things, especially like when I'm doing um, commercials, um, you know, and and I try to make it a little bit different. So now my next set of commercials, I'm going to have um, different different style of voiceovers because when I'm watching. Um, as I'm watching these shows and I have it in my ear as I'm doing it is like, it makes me feel like almost like I'm a character in that show, you know? Mm, I love that. That That's a deep appreciation and oh, awareness and just living really vicariously through these characters in a way, you know? Yeah, definitely. And so tell me a little bit about your character on Mighty Oak. Yes. Oh, I love my character, DB. 
DB is a single father uh, of a beautiful uh, young girl, Emma, and he is uh, basically really a mentor to all of these young people who are just really trying to find their way and to Gina, who he's known for a long time, who is coming back from uh, her own set of trauma, you know, mm -hmm. and also helping out young Oak, you know, and uh, because his mother is dealing with a lot of stuff and uh, he's fatherless, you know, so it really, for me, what touches my heart about not just the role, but also the movie is that it, it celebrates the importance of what makes a family, you know, and chosen family and the family that you pick up along the way on your journey. You know, and family doesn't have to be blood. You know, we all know that as adults. Family is this thing that is so, I believe it transcends, you know, uh, birth, you know, who, who, who is your blood family. It really is about uh, graciousness, gratitude and compassion. No, so now, how is that different than, let's say, for example, um, and and better yet, where did you draw your inspiration from um, for that um, for that character? Oh, you know, DB was one of the I, I, I don't want to say easiest characters, right? DB was a character for me that when uh, I, I, I'm I don't want to say I'm a hippie, but mm -hmm. uh, I am very much, you know, I wear my beads, you know, and, and uh, crystals. And I, I, I love wearing that kind of energy on me. It feels alive. And so uh, when I met with our costume designer, uh, and, and I like to wear patterns and, and, and uh, floral stuff. And she said, oh, that's so DB. And so they bought my wardrobe from me. And so uh, basically what, I drew the inspiration from was really my own life because I also uh, was a college professor for uh, a year and a half. And I also mentor, uh, mentored people, young people. And so it was like, oh, this is great, you know? And now that I'm on the other side of all of that and I'm really focusing on my own present moment of, wow, I wanna stand in the place that I am and be all that I can be and be 100% the artist that I can be. It's like I have all of this life experience. So I just kind of just said, I'm gonna let you ride with this DB and I'm just gonna be a vessel. <laughs> you know, and it was beautiful. It was so beautiful. Yeah, it's um, and, and it's a great movie. Um, actually, I watched um, I, I I watched part of it the other night because um, got called away from um to do something else. But um, but yeah, I like the um the the whole message of it because the um the big the big thing about it is um you know they had so much going for them then um then the um the what do you call it the the lead singer. Um, when he passed away, oh, and not, uh -huh, uh -huh, get, right, and not to get the um the the um the kid Oak to come um to come in um to be their um their 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 lead. And, and Dana and, thinks that he is the reincarnation uh -huh, of right. her dead brother, and you know I I'm not on that train with her. Uh, yeah. DB isn't, but what's interesting, that's where we differ because for me in my personal life, I really, you know, I believe in God and, but I also, and I also believe in embracing your life with the heart of a Buddha, you mm. know, and radical acceptance, meaning right. that, uh, there is power in the belief of reincarnation and that who's to say that it doesn't exist. We don't know. We're not dead. You know what I mean? But yeah but we do know we can feel that energy of people who have crossed over. You know, we all have felt that, whoa, I, you know, even if it's in a butterfly passing, you know, right. a little bit more than three times, you know what I mean? You know that that is, oh, that's a beautiful sign there. Or a sunflower, yeah. you know, how it just sits. Uh, so I, I, find it fascinating. But DB was very much, whoa, I told you a story about my father. <laughs> How'd you jump to that? So um, that's where we differ. 
Yeah, and um, and you know, and I I do believe that everyone is all um is connected. You know how they um they say if a butterfly flaps his wings and um on the other side of the world, it affects people on this side. Oh. I believe that that um that that is that is the case. I I think that that happens. Yes. Um, yes. And I also believe in when you put things out into the universe, the universe hears you and makes it manifest it. Law of uh, attraction. And- the law of attraction. The law of attraction. I I really believe in that because I Likewise. mean, like when I started um doing my show, um you know, and this is something I wanted. I always wanted um to have actors and singers and different people on my show, um in in order to attract more viewers because of the and then also to have some of the politicians and different people that are bringing um you know other messages. I want to bring an entire um a whole range of messages to my viewers mm. and at first people were like well you know you're just a guy with the mic that's not gonna happen mm. Mm. here i am interviewing rodney hicks and um you know mm. <laughs> and, um, mm. and actors and then i had um other politicians tomorrow i actually have um someone who's running for commissioner here in broward county wow. and um, and I have, um, you know, so many different people from different walks of life, um, you know, different movies. Um, Cheyenne Hernandez is on, um, I believe she's on later on this week with, um, she's on The the Tax Collector, another movie. Oh, um, yeah, so I mean, so the thing is, you know, that law of attraction does work. And like I said, Muhammad Ali's ex-wife, um, you know, so many different people. Um, so I really believe in that law of attraction. And it's about, you know, uh, sorry to interrupt. It, 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 okay. is, also, it is about also manifesting properly. Mm. You know, uh, I have a, a life coach that I've been working with now for uh, since June. And he says to me, let's take out the word if. Mm. Meaning, you know, how we say, well, you know, if this happens, I'm going to be, it's when this happens. <laughs> when this happens. And, yeah. and if it doesn't, here's the thing then it wasn't meant for you. Right. And it's not about getting what you want because sometimes what you think you want may not be what is right for you. Right. You know, it's like, oh, the train uh, passed my stop. That wasn't your stop. Exactly. (laughs) Perfect, a perfect um, thing about that. Um, a, A perfect example of that is how many people did you hear have the story I missed my train on 9-11. I missed my flight on 9-11. I missed all. And then they're like, they were upset at the time that they missed them. Yeah. But then when they heard what happened, then they were like, wow, because it wasn't your time. You know, and that's the thing. And and people always feel like, oh man, I want to win the lotto. You know what? We always hear about the guy that played a lotto one time in his life and won because it was for him. And you know, to <laughs> back on that, I firmly, firmly believe. What is meant for you will never pass you by. Exactly. And exactly. once you really ground in that knowing of that, oh my gosh, life becomes so much lighter because mm-hmm. you're not stuck in your head of that pattern of, oh, when is it my time or when is it my turn? It's sit down, breathe, <laughs> and trust that mm-hmm. life will be what it's meant to be for you, but stay positive and stay the course. And I say that because I am someone who three years ago, I lost the ability to speak. I lost the ability to sing. Yes, I was diagnosed with a neurological condition called spasmodic dysphonia at that time. And I had, I departed, uh, come from a way, you know, show that I just love, but I knew I have to give my notice here because I can no longer sing, I can no longer talk, and I need to heal and begin that process. So when I began that journey and that process of just sitting down, of just the universe said, Rod, we're gonna need you to sit for a moment. We're gonna need you to just breathe and just really, now you have the amazing opportunity to look back on your life lived and Mm -hmm. see now, wow, how do you want to live it from here? And I actually gave up on the thought that I'd ever really talk in this clear way again, or let alone sing. I I, I let it go after some months, after some support groups. Mm -hmm. But I said, okay, God, whatever. I got off of social media. 
the whole thing. My dad was dying of cancer at the time. And so we had a lot of unresolved things and we resolved it in that time, a month before he passed. And on the morning of his death, when he passed, I woke up and I'd always check my voice, you know, to go, mm -hmm. is it gonna be there? And I just, just, hmm, hello. Um, I, I can talk again. I, wow. whoa. And this is 1000% truth is, mm -hmm. whoa. And with that becomes a lot of internal responsibility of going, okay, okay, you give me my voice back. So now you do more work. You know, you do more work and you, you know, and I had to go to the therapy to learn how to use it again. And mm -hmm. I thank God every single day for that blessing, because now I wake up Monday through Friday, five o'clock in the morning. Saturday and Sunday is like my my time where I sleep in to like six. But I wake up five in the morning. Mm -hmm. I go outside, sit on my porch. I'm really blessed to just be able to sit on the porch and look at this beautiful sunrise. Mm -hmm. And that's how I start my day. You know, I hadn't done that prior. You know, I, I am a meditator, you know, and I've been meditating for six years of my life. And uh, I had all of that, but this part of, oh, let's add that to it and let's add a little prayer to it too. It was all just, Ah, this renewing, right? You know, that that was taking place in my life. And um, and now I'm just really taking every day as it comes with this renewed sense of gratitude and joy and above all love, above and, all love. And that's what it's all about because I, I think that, um, you know, even like with this pandemic, yes, we've lost a lot of people in this pandemic. And, but we needed that time to heal. We needed the earth needed that um, this time to heal. We, um, you know, and I really believe that um, that God put it in such a way that we had to shut down the world for a couple of months in order to um to, to, to heal. And not just for us. The earth said, "Hey, y'all, y'all gonna have to pause for a minute because exactly. um, I, I I need to grow some grass here." I need to grow some plants and mm -hmm. the atmosphere needs to clean up so that therefore then y'all need to clean up. Mm -hmm. And it, it's, and that's what, you know, cause here's the thing, being someone who has come from healing and knows what, what knows what that is like, it's, Oh, this, the world is going through a collective healing and healing hurts in that beginning. Healing hurts because you are shaking things that you are used to and it's going, you can either come out that sifter <laughs> or you can get a little stuck in there. But you know what? I believe that you can go and we can all come out together. And, you know, and that's the thing, because um, sometimes we just got to get uncomfortable to be comfortable. And um and now this get unstuck. <laughs> so we can have this conversation going on. I'm telling you, I think it's like <laughs> we need to do that, like the Stephen Rodney show or something. <laughs> come on, come on. <laughs> because it's the truth. Sometimes people just need to hear it, and um and they know it already, but they just don't. They know it, but they they don't want to move on or move forward because they're so comfortable where they are. Well, you know. You know and, and we really have to we really have to get uncomfortable sometimes, you know, and and I mean, like you're in you're in um, in um, Denver right now, right? Where are you? I am, yes, I'm in Denver, Colorado. Yes. But you 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 weren't originally you're not originally from Denver. No, uh, I've lived in Denver now for two years and uh, we moved during a pandemic uh, <laughs> to the best neighborhood. Oh, my gosh. I look out my window and. Mm -hmm. I feel like I keep saying this to people that I live in Dr. King's dream. It's like this little subdivision, meaning I look out my window, I see this beautiful, we're across, across the street from a park. And, mm -hmm. but the people that I see out this window mm -hmm. are of every race and not mm -hmm. just race, of every, uh, uh, pre every preference, everything with their families, with their, and it's just, amazing to see all of this color all mm -hmm. of this white black red everything 
And mm -hmm. I am like, wow, okay, I think I'm retiring here, you know? <laughs> and I live 10 minutes from the airport, my commute. Yeah, that's great. That's good. Yeah. You know, it's, uh, th that's one thing. I mean, me, I like to travel and I hate to drive. I, I couldn't see myself like some people drive an hour to the airport. No, I can mm -hmm. do it. Mm -hmm. See, but the thing is, you're not originally from there. And I'm originally from Philly. And you were able to move and, and still make yourself comfortable and even probably more comfortable in your new environment than you were in your old um you know. you know, I lived in New York for the majority of my life and New York City. And mm -hmm. in that time in my life, in my 20s and 30s, I was not comfortable in my skin. So that was, I, I don't even think it was the energy of New York City. It was, I was still healing from all old stuff. So, but I was working all the time, you know, mm -hmm. but at the same time, I just didn't have a sense of myself. I didn't have an ownership and a love for myself that, I mean, I'm 46 years old now and I'm just like, I wouldn't trade that for the world. You know what I mean? It's like, because you start to have a belonging. You start to, you know, I, I did this thing uh, a year ago where I said, I love you to myself in the mirror for a month straight. Really? A month straight. Morning or, or or just every time you pass the mirror? When I got up in the morning, it was part of my ritual. And mm. I said it until I believed it. Mm. Coupled with therapy, coupled with all of that. But you say it until you believe it. And something starts to shift. Something starts to really, really shift. That you, it's not about, I'm staying positive. All no, 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 no. It's about being comfortable where you're at. And mm. it is... I think it's one of the most profound things that we can, uh, gifts that we can give to ourselves to say, I love you to yourself, because therefore you then have the capacity to love all, to love people, you know, and, you know, you have your boundaries, of course, but mm -hmm. you really, really have this feeling of no matter how you're feeling inside, you know, if you're sick or whatever, you really have this momentum of, oh, I am grateful. And that's called gratitude and compassion for self because that starts with you, you know? Mm -hmm. And you know, it's how can you say you love someone if you don't love yourself? Exactly. How can you give love if you don't know what love is? You know, Dr. King says that all the time. Mm -hmm. you know? And so many people, and at the end of the day, my philosophy is love wins. Exclamation point. <laughs> <laughs> hey, give me just a moment. I got to run a quick commercial break, but I'm going to sure. be right with you, okay? All right, thank you. All right, thanks. Let me tell you about CCT. Ladies and gentlemen, Army of Love. Hey, Screwed up from things I need. We are the opening act for Arcade Fire. <laughs> <laughs> The Morning, Mr. Biggs. Thanks for the guitar. This thing is amazing. Who's that? A lieutenant upstairs. You're writing a lot of songs? I actually wrote a song yesterday. You <laughs> did? It's about it not being easy growing up. I hear your uh, friend's got some uh, sick skills. Sure does. I'm Gina. Oh, do you uh, know anything about the man who owned that tailor? Bone Jackson, lead singer of Army of Love. Your sister, right? Eh? Got him? Do you believe in reincarnation? What if we were all meant to be together? You, me, Vaughn, the band, just in a different way, in a different time. Is that so crazy? Are you guys ready to meet your new frontman? Oh my god. It's Army of Love. Woo! Yeah! You were meant to be a part of this family. Where did you find this kid? I didn't. He found me. 
Yep. That's great. <laughs> Love the show, love the show, and we have Gianna Harris coming up on um on Monday. As a matter of fact, she's gonna be- I love her. <laughs> yeah, she's gonna be great. Um, so I like to run the commercial every so often just to remind people um the movie so they can they can go out and watch it. It's um it, it, it it's really good. Um, so today, guys, um, we're here talking with Rodney Hicks, and um and he's more than just an actor. I mean, this guy is um all around you know great person and and i've been reading um a lot about you because i like to find out more about the people that um that are going to be on the show and then as um it's like every time i read i mean whether it's on um you know wikipedia or, or everything um and i always get the um the um initials mix up it's not imdb um what is it IMDb, mm-hmm. Internet Movie Database. Yeah. <laughs> so, um, so when I was reading on there and I started seeing all the different projects and um and the different things that you were doing, I'm like, wow, you know. And then I'm gonna just like I was telling um Tommy the other day because he was on the show. Um, on Monday he was on the show. Um, you know, and I and I was like you guys are all younger than I am. And the things that you guys have done, it's like, what did I do? I wasted my life. Yeah. <laughs> no, no. I, I believe that we're all on a journey to our own finding, our mm-hmm. own finding of self, our own finding of our purpose, you know, mm-hmm. and our meaning. And, you know, some people find it like that, you know, and others, I know for me, I always knew what I wanted to do, but I didn't know the the purpose of it, you know, until I knew the purpose. And then you, you, you stand in the place that you are. And that's, um, that's one of the things, um, and I'm here typing something else on the other side. I'm trying to, um, send a message to someone else. (laughs) Um, and people, um, guys, if you guys have, um, questions, send them in on, um, on, on the show link. All right. Definitely make sure you send them in on the show link. That's what I was telling someone just, just sent me a message. I'm like, send it in on the link so we can, um, post it on the show, you know? So, um, and this is one of the questions that I have coming up, um, that I was going to ask you anyway. Um, what other projects are you working on right now and what projects do you have coming up? Yes. Thank you so much for asking. I'm also a playwright, uh, and writer and, uh, I'm, thrilled. Um, I actually just turned in my first uh, pilot uh, TV series that I created, uh, wrote and created. Uh, It's based on, well, it's adapted from uh, my stage play, Flame Bro or The Ugly Play. And this is a TV adaptation of it called Flame Broiled, a new sketch dramedy show. And um, it's centers on race and culture in America. And it's uh, not just black and white, it's everyone and everything. And it's, uh, you know, it takes the sketch comedy genre format and it takes one more step further where Mm -hmm. we're adding elements of heightened drama as well and (laughs) sci-fi. So, I mean, the show, Think Key and Peel, a black lady sketch show in the Twilight Zone rolled into one. Mm. And, and, and also a little bit of random acts of flyness <laughs> on HBO, just you know, a little bit, but um, but it's really character based. It's all uh-huh. character based, and it's not an insult show. What it is, compassion is at the root of it, and an understanding of how we got here, how, why are we here, and it goes back and forth through time on mm-hmm. a crazy roller coaster ride, and. Uh, What I love about this uh, show is that there's no regular cast. It's Mm -hmm. everyone is a guest star. So it's opportunities for many, many, many actors. And uh, and also, you know, the hope is to create a very diverse uh, production staff, not only uh, acting staffs, uh, acting crew. Uh, And and I'm just really excited to um, see, uh, you know, it get bought. (laughs) <laughs> and and to see you know not it's not a, a it's not for me it is for i believe how what do i want to put out to the world that can be a small part in us moving forward and us learning and someone who will come to the show who will watch it and have different beliefs and then watch and go oh 
oh, that's my Uncle Jimmy. <laughs> you know, or, or, oh, that's my aunt, or, or, oh, that's me. <laughs> you know what I mean? And and laugh at ourselves like the Norman Lear TV shows, you wow. know, uh, All in the Family and Good Times. I mean, Good Times, mm -hmm. come on, they served it up. You know, oh. we were oh. laughing one minute and then James died and damn, damn, damn. You know what I mean? It's, <laughs> we have these iconic moments our, um, all in the family where, mm -hmm. You know, Edith had her uh, friend who was uh, identified as a, a, a transgender, a female. And by the end of the episode, uh, there was a hate crime. I mean, it's things like that, but this isn't a sitcom. So it's like, ooh, I get to do vignettes? Yes! You know, so that you never know where it's going or what you're going to get. And the thing is, back in those days, we didn't see those kind of things on TV. We didn't see um, those topics, and even the topics that um, that were touched on on um, on good times. We didn't see topics like um, you know like poverty and and racism and um, and you know things like that. We didn't see any of that stuff no. on TV. And how can we forget? I mean, come on, the the episode with Penny and the the, the iron. I mean. Yeah. I mean, we learned so much from these uh, because what, what it is, is that the reason I bring up those shows is the commonality with that and Flame Broiled is that it really is about a reflect, it's a reflecting show. Right. It's like we are going through such trauma and turmoil and we're ready because we're already here. And it's like, oh, we're actually ready to, to have entertainment that matches this. But for me, it's not for laugh for laugh's sake, or, oh, well, let's show how this group of people is bad, or this group of people is, no. It's, let's just show it all in an artful way, in a creative way. And like you said, show how we um, are part of this, because, I mean, like, the same episode of Good Times, um, I mean, there were a lot of parents that started to see themselves in the Ooh. law. Um, and, you know. His mom, it, Chip yeah. Fields hard when um when when you when you know when you see that and you're like wow is that the is that how i am is that how i make this person feel is it you know so it's like yeah those shows help the culture change and yeah. i believe uh you know then we went into the 90s you know and 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 uh because i mean the 80s we had great television but now we're in this new world we are in this brave new world where I believe that we want to see our world and ourselves represented because we are so much more than black and white now. We mm -hmm. are so many things. And with Flame Broiled, uh, the goal is let's laugh a little bit while, while, we, while we watch this. Let's actually cry together a little bit. Let's actually feel something. And let's get a little like, oh man, Okay, they went there. You know, let's get a little bit of that so we can talk about it, so we can start to really purge all of this inherited American trauma, the systemic inherited American trauma, and release the systemic uh, uh, post traumatic slave disorder that we all have, every single person on this planet, so that we can start to release all of that and move forward into a new day definitely and then um and um as you were saying we went from the 80 from the the tv shows of the 80s to the 90s and then we saw and then this, we had reality tv in the 2000s early 2000s. Well, we, saw this, we saw this cute little kid named raven simone on the cosby show and now you are working <laughs> I know I'm on my <laughs> Raven Simone, let me tell you something. She was always more than a cute little kid. Raven Simone was always a genius. Yeah. She was always a genius. I, I, you know, always, always, always. And to meet her and to work with her, we worked together one day. It was uh, one scene. It was a backstage scene in the show. This woman, she can read the phone book and it's funny. I mean, no, no, that is just the simple truth. You know, I mean, she took this and just, I had to literally contain myself from laughing, like because I'm like, wow, she is just boom, and and I just the minute I met her, I'm like, I love you, you know. I mean, it's people like that where you're just like, you have the. She started so young, and to now be this extraordinary, not just woman and artist, she's a businesswoman, and to see that and to be around that energy. 
uh, I know for everyone, we all, it just lifted even, it lifted us even more. So um, I just have mad respect for um, Miss Raven Simone. And and she was a businesswoman from way back. I mean, way even back. her shows way um, back. in the house, that's a Raven, Cheetah Girls. Cheetah Girls, yeah, all of it. All just of it. made that a whole big thing. And you may not know, I saw her um, in Sister Act on Broadway. Really? Oh, yeah. She played Dolores Van Cartier. Wow. I am a musical theater geek, so I'm just going to let you know. Uh, and uh, and she was amazing. I went back just to see her because I knew that I didn't know what she was going to bring, but I knew she was going to bring it. And she brought it. I mean, her voice is amazing, but her just her essence and comedic timing. Mm. I mean, she just said, I'm going to wear this role out on stage and I'm going <laughs> to do it eight times a week. And she did that, you know, so yeah. Yeah, and, you know, Janelle, pa Janelle Parrish, she sings as well, you know, and, and, and Carlos Penavega. I mean, literally like, I was like, whoa, everybody in this cast has musical background, has a musical theater background. And, uh, you know, look, theater is where you get that training, is where you get that grounding. And it is really great to see uh, the the stars of today of of film and TV, mm -hmm. everyone comes from theater for the most part, and that's that you know, and that's how it used to be back in the day where people had to be well rounded. We forget, we forget you know, that. Um, yeah, back in the day of you know your um um Fred Astaire and all these different people, they had to be well rounded. They had to sing, dance, act, um, all these things. Nowadays, it's just you know. A person comes up with a reality show and all of a sudden they're a star. It's like, huh? <laughs> you know what? I'm not going to even give power to that because, you know, it, it, it's that's not my ministry. You know, I think I'm going to focus on the people who this is all they wanted to do or the people who, wow, when I hit that age, this is when I gave my all my focus. You know, uh, I just had a, a reading of another play of mine, uh, Just Press Save. I call it my young people play. And it was uh, the reading was directed by Michael Greif, who directed uh, the Broadway show Dear Evan Hansen. And, you know, you know, going through two months of reworking a play, you know, all of these things. I love getting in and doing the work. And so in this new phase of my life, focusing on television, film and writing, I'm like, bring it. I, 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 I feel like I'm in the I'm my prime and as an artist. And it's I want to play Dr. King. I want to portray all of these people who, when I was younger, I had only dreamed about. And now it's like, oh, yeah, you have the facility for that. And mm -hmm. so I'm ready for it all. And I'm not afraid to say that. And you know, and the thing is too, like, um, and I heard, um, oh gosh, I don't think it was Steve Harvey that said it. I can't remember. Um, I think it might have been Steve Harvey. But anyhow, um, they were saying, you know, the difference between the singers of yesterday and the ones of today. These guys have a hit, and you forget who they are tomorrow. We're still playing music from back in the fifties, the sixties, and the seventies. You know, you can't, you can't beat a Teddy P. You can't beat. <laughs> Je Jeffrey Osborne, I mean, Teddy Pender, I mean, the list goes on, but let me, you know, there's a reason why Aretha Franklin is finally getting her biopic respect that comes out, I believe in January, you know, mm -hmm. I have several friends in that and I am so excited about that movie. So I'm just gonna plug that for them. And, <laughs> uh, but also uh, Liesl Tommy directed it and she's just amazing. And mm -hmm. then you have the Mahaley, Mahaley a biopic. You know, mm -hmm. Mahalia Jackson, it's like, and part of me, it's like, wow, I wish that they had this when I was coming up, uh, a mm -hmm. young person. But then I'm like, no, I'm glad they're having it now. Because you know why? We're going to listen now, right. collectively, and more and more people are going to listen. It's not just a niche market now. It's like, oh, no, these are powerful people you need to know about. And the thing is, their stories, we need to know about their stories. Ooh, I mean, yes. Um, and and not just with the um, with the um the music and um and stuff too, but we also have so many people that were behind the scenes. We had um so many people that made these things happen, yes. and um, and yes. now we're, we're you know we need to know because like I tell people all the time, I do a lot of work with um with kids with mm. um 
schools and different things, and I talk to them all the time. And I keep telling them, I'm like, look, everyone in here is not going to be a football player or a basketball player, but you can be an agent, you can be a manager, you could be a coach, you could be a trainer, you could be so many different things in that arena and still make money. You know, um, and and that's and that's one of the things because we only tell the people about the star, but we don't tell them about the team that made the star happen, and that's what we have to start telling these kids about. It's yeah. interesting, you know. I, I when I was doing master classes, I always tell young people, you know, don't look at the uh, destination, don't look at the uh, that stop, you know, where you see someone. Oh, I want to be an actor because I saw that person and that's a star. It's mm -hmm. you want to be an actor or an athlete or whatever that is. You want to be that for the journey. Yes. For the journey that it takes. Again, I'm 46 years old. This is the first mm -hmm. film that has actually come out. I mean, I've done three films in my life, right? My fir The first one, I was 24 years old and mm -hmm. it, it never came out, right? And so... I, I, I wasn't ready. And I look back and I'm like, ooh, you weren't ready for that movie to come out, <laughs> you know, because I didn't have a sense of myself uh -huh. to be here now. And it's like, oh, okay, now you're ready. You're ready for, for, for that. And it's, for me, it's, it's, you know, we can see the gloss, we can see all of that, but it takes a lot to really, really, be here now. And there's a lot of young people who know that and get it, you know? And I'm like, more power to you because I know I wasn't that young person, exactly. you know? And even, I'm talking about like teens, 20s, 30s young person, you know? And, right. but all of that made me who I am today because you gotta get through the falls. You gotta get through the mistakes. You gotta get through all of that so that you're not making them on a grand stage. And, you know, and the thing is, like, um, when I was talking to Tommy Reagan the other day, um, you know, and I didn't realize this kid is, like, it's a to another Probably. level. I'm like, yes. Yeah. <laughs> I mean. And Gianna's the same way. The two of them are both prodigies. Mm -hmm. Really? Oh, wait until you hear. <laughs> yeah. They're prodigies. Because, I mean, because it's like, you know, at 12 and he, but first off, I didn't realize that he actually played the guitar in the, um, in the movie. I'm in the like. Movie. Oh, yes. Oh, the songs. Oh, he, yeah. He wrote them and everything. And I'm like, because I thought he was just doing like. He co-wrote some of the songs. Mm-hmm. I, I'm just. I thought he was just going with the um, with the thing, and there was some um, something playing in the background. No, no that's him. That was him. Mm -hmm. <laughs> mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Oh my! Wow, it made me feel like I want to go learn how to play the guitar. I'm like, am I too old to learn? How you to know play what? You're not too old to play the guitar, but you know what? I don't want to play the guitar. Uh, <laughs> I tried it, but my fingers. What happens is that you get calluses, you know, uh, and uh, I just thought I'm good. <laughs> I don't want to do that. <laughs> you know, I'm good. I want to feel my fingers. You know. Uh, yeah, yeah, nah, I'm all right. But um, but but yeah, but um, but no, and um, and the thing is too, and that's you know that's their thing. Um, and I'm happy for them. That's their thing. But me, my thing is, I like to talk. I like to um to engage. Um, you know, with people. This is my. This to me is what I like. I mm -hmm. I honestly can do this. I could do like um like a a CNN and be on the show all day, every day, twenty four hours a day kind of thing. I See, do, that you know. isn't me. Oh. <laughs> I love talking, though. I do. I do. I, everyone who knows me knows that. Um, I, I, you know, growing up in the in the 80s, you know, you know, when we used to have the phones, you know what I mean? And all you didn't have text messaging. So all you do is talk on the phone, the friends, and, you know, you do the three way calls and all of that stuff. But um, now I, I mean, I'm an introvert, really. And I guess I'm a noisy introvert. Uh, <laughs> But that's why the pandemic is like, what pandemic? You know, I, mm -hmm. I enjoy the alone. I enjoy reading. I enjoy mm -hmm. learning. I'm a self-taught learner. And, um, you know, it, it's there's something precious to me about that, about not holding people where you met them. You know, of really taking people for where they are right now, um, mm -hmm. because I, I just think that there is a beauty to that. You know, there's such a beauty to that. Um, mm -hmm. And I think a lot of times we can hold people from where they were and where we met them and not have going, wow, let me see that. Let me see. Whoa, 
<laughs> you better work. And, and, and I applaud so many people uh, in, in my life on that and uh, silently, you know, and, and I just, my focus with everyone hating on everyone and the divisions is, man, I am gonna stand in this lane of love and togetherness. And it's it actually feels so good to do. Mm -hmm. it, it doesn't, because with that being said, you know, I used to be a person who I wanted everyone to like me. And in that, you know, it, you, you run into trouble with that, right? And right. so now it's like, I don't care who doesn't like me because mm -hmm. I like me. <laughs> and it, it, it's, it's a thing and it's not a rude, it's anything because not everyone's going to like you, right? Exactly. But it's like when you don't let that consume you, when you don't, when you're not living your life to please others. Mm -hmm. Oh man, the walk becomes so much more gentle. Yes, it, it just does. And that's the, and that's the thing. A lot of people don't realize is um, we put the stress on ourselves. We put all these different things on ourselves because we're so busy trying to please another person. And to be honest, that person probably doesn't even care about what about what you're doing. But you're maybe, maybe not, you know, I mean, well, you're right, because a lot of times that person's not even thinking about you, you know, and a lot of times we're doing that to ourselves because yeah. we then create this veil of fear, I like to call it, you know, until we can go that way and go, yeah. it's not about you. You know, and they're dealing with their own stuff. We're all human beings. And the thing is, sometimes you may be sitting there going, oh, well, you know, I got to do it this way because um, this person wants it that way or whatever. And the person's probably thinking it was great the way you did it the first time. Why? Why are you still doing this? You know, Oscar <laughs> Wilde. Uh, it, well, it says that Oscar Wilde says it, but then some people refute it. So there's a quote that says, be yourself. Everyone else is already taken. There you go. <laughs> you know, I mean, it's really as simple as that. Walk mm -hmm. your own personal individual journey. You know, mm -hmm. my friends and come from a way they used to nickname me Uniqua. <laughs> <laughs> you know, I because mm -hmm. I, I was probably wearing my my crystals over my um clothes and mm -hmm. and you know and my beads and and just walking in my own light. And I was learning how to do that. And now that I firmly am in my light. Mm -hmm. There's nothing to prove to anyone. It, right. it, it's just, I'm focused on the work now in this part of my life. And I'm focused on the work inside. And I'm focused on the hopeful work, creative work that will help others. Whether mm -hmm. it's getting them jobs <laughs> or whether it's just helping someone heal a heart, you know, indirectly whether it's just through my works of art or whether it's just through this conversation or someone going, wow, something that that person said really touched and moved me in my day to day. For me, I believe in that, the power of positivity and the power of just love wins. And that's, and that, and that's perfect. That's a, you know what? I think more of us need to start living that way just positivity we we have too much negativity in the world we need to have more positivity um maybe we could get some of those beads i don't know <laughs> you know what let me tell you i do not take these off and i usually have more beads ar around me i don't wear them outside of my clothes now because i guess i just something clicked in me and said oh these are for you right and um and i know what these crystals mean for me and mm -hmm. It for me, it makes it, I feel the presence there, you know, the little bit of weight that it helps me carry myself differently. It helps me uh, remain accountable for myself and for my being and for my gratitude, for my gratitude. And mm -hmm. um, on that note, yeah. Yeah. All right. So Rodney, I appreciate you being on the show. I really do. We, um, you know, um, our hour is up because um, I, it's lunchtime talk. So I'd like to keep it at lunchtime. <laughs> ah, thank you for everyone who joined in. 
but um, yeah, and um, and even people on the replay because the thing is, um, like right now you're in Denver, so um, for you, well, now it's one o'clock. Um, you were in, are you in Mountain Time or Pacific Time? Mountain Time. Mm -hmm. Mountain Time. All right, so you're two hours behind us. Um, yes. yeah, so your lunchtime people there are going to be watching it later on. Um, I don't know why they 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 always wait till noon. <laughs> That's okay. But, uh, even though we're live, you know, um, but um, but yeah, so we're gonna have a lot more on the replay and different things too. So any of you guys um out there that wanna be on the show, whether it's any um anything that you have, definitely look us up. All right, Rodney, but thank you very much. And I encourage everyone out there to check out um Mighty Oak. It's a great show, a great movie. Um, you know, and also um I encourage them to to um to just Google Rodney and see some of the other things that he's doing. Um, and as, as a matter of fact, when your show when your show comes out, because we're not using the word if mm. we're picked up, we're talking about when it gets picked up by HBO or one of the major ones, Netflix, you know, um, and when it comes out, then I, um, I invite you to come back on the show again. I, I absolutely will be there. And until then, people can follow me on Instagram at Rodney Hicks here. Rodney Hicks here. Yes. All right, cool. All right, Rodney, thank you very much. I really appreciate Thanks, it. Okay? All right. You have a good one. Peace. All right. Guys, thanks very much. I appreciate you guys watching. I appreciate everything that, um, you know, I appreciate when you guys are on the show and, and watching the show because it gives me the energy to keep going. It makes me continue doing what I do every day. All right. Um, so definitely check out Rodney. Check out um, his Instagram, Rodney Hicks here. And also check out um, Mighty Oak. Mighty Oak is a great movie. You guys are going to love it. It's a feel good movie. All right. Um, it takes tragedy and turns it into triumph. And it's, it's a feel good good movie i like it i really like it we're gonna have the rest of the cast on we're gonna have um gianna harris she's on next week i have um um cheyenne hernandez coming up on friday she's with another movie with um tax collector and tomorrow we have um michelle jones she's running for commissioner in tamarack florida so we're gonna have a few different people and we're all and, we're, um, and as i said we have miss ali we have um muhammad ali's ex-wife coming up on the 26. so we have a lot of different people coming up just check out lunchtime talk with steve.com and you can see our calendar on there <clears throat> so guys as always i tell you go out to the website lunchtime talk with steve.com check out um the get help section there are things out there if you guys need help don't feel ashamed to ask for help okay there is nothing wrong with if you need help going out there and asking for it click on the get help section you'll see um the um feed in america you can just put in your zip code it tells you where there is um, a free food bank where you can give away food i mean where they're giving away food all over the country you just put in your zip code and it'll tell you exactly where you need to go. Click on 211 um, and put your zip code again and they'll tell you of um, organizations that will help you with your rent and with your um, your electric bill and different things like that. Suicide prevention hotline so you can have someone to talk to because in these times we need someone to talk to. We can't just keep, um, you know, just holding it in and saying, you know, um, it's going to get better because it may not get better for you without you releasing it go out to the website click on that get help section all right all right guys um it's time for me to get out of here as always you are your brother's keeper all right do a random act of kindness for a stranger you see a homeless guy on the street or something go ahead and um and just go to mcdonald's buy a, um something from the dollar menu give it to him because that may be the only meal that he has for the day all right so make that happen because tomorrow you may be that stranger that need that random act of kindness do it, all right? You are your brother's keeper. As always, I wish you guys the best. I'll see you guys tomorrow, and I'll talk to you then. Peace, people. Please visit lunchtimetalkwithsteve.com if you would like to be a guest or advertise on the show. If you're interested in any of the products or services you saw on the show today, or if you would like to be a guest on the show, please visit our website, lunchtimetalkwithsteve.com. Thank you.